I say good day to you all. I've come here today to see myself in every one of you. There are seven billion people on earth, including all of us and Richard too, and we are all expressing who I am. And to come to full grips with that is to realize there is nothing else but that. I am God. God is all there is. And this, what I'm going to talk about, is my interpretations of Walter Russell's philosophy. And that resonates with me. It changed my life. He's answered all my questions, and I've applied it to my life and proved it works. Uh, nothing matters, give it no thought, and the final book which says, know who I am. So I'm going to talk about stuff that's a little bit radical. Uh, it, it, it resonates with me, and I, I'll just talk about it. God has one law only. There is only one law in creation, and it's summed up in one word only, and that word is balance. There's nothing in creation that is possible ever, ever to be out of balance. It is impossible. We live in a mind-imagined universe of make-believe, and it's made up of a cause and effect, which is how we express God. We imagine on the inner level and compress the idea and then express it in the world out there. And providing we become aware of what Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount, and this is the real core of what Russell was about, and it's and the core of my philo understanding of the philosophy. I and the fa Jesus said, I and the Father are one, there is no other. I of myself can do nothing. Many man cannot do a thing. And when man, I've come to realize why he can't do a thing. And this is what the real issues are, we are dealing with today. And Walter Russell explained how it works. He explained what causes creation to take place. He understood cause. And I've had a in a passionate desire to know what caused something. Uh, all my life, I can remember when I was a kid, I'm the third eldest of nine children reared on a 100 acre farm back in the 30s and 40s, and I said to Dad, what's the bull doing on the cow, Dad? Oh, he said he's just having a look at the grass on the other side. <laughs> but it didn't answer my question. so. <laughs> it's amazing. So I've come to know cause, and to know cause, you come to know God. And you come to not only know God, but you know where God is at all times. And you know, Russell explains how God expresses love. It normally expressed in, well, it is only expressed in as motion. And that motion is actually what we call electricity. Now, electricity is not energy. And he's very adamant to come to understand electricity is not energy. There is, Russell says, there is only one source of energy in the universe. And that is the center of the being of who I am, God. God is the only force and the only energy which is expressed as consciousness. That consciousness is what powers the universe. We are just pure conscious beings. I myself am of the opinion that Jesus was never born. He was dealing with consciousness at all times. And I don't think Walter Russell was ever born. I don't think any of us have ever been born. I think we're a clear expression of who I am. And we, we think we're somebody. But in the law of cause and effect, every cause will have an effect. So if I take any action, God will balance that action with an equal and opposite reaction. Now that is the most profound 
phenomena in the world today, and we are not fully aware of it. We cannot do anything in this world without creating the opposite. You cannot get hot water without creating cold water. It's impossible. You cannot have global warming without an equal and opposite global cooling. Uh, it is impossible, just impossible. It's impos impossible to have good without bad. It's impossible. I, I can't stress this enough. To know what causes war is a desire for peace. The more we desire peace, the more power we give wo to war. The same applies to the most important thing of all, is our own health. And when we start to apply this principle of knowing what causes ill health. You can then understand, as Russell said, it's reasonably simple to understand cause. Any normal person, I left school when I was 14 and virtually no education, but I can understand cause is very simple. But no man, no man has ever been able to understand effect. Man normally will use an effect to get an effect. Let me see if I can explain. If you put three men on a seesaw, it'd be like that. And if you said the man balance that, man had put another man there, it'd use an effect to get an effect. Now, if you said to God, you balance that, God would do a totally different thing altogether. He would shift the fulcrum where the two balance the one. You understand that what I'm saying is, it's an infallible law. There can be not a cat's whisker out of balance in the, in the universe. If we pluck a flower, the universe has got to vibrate and, and balance. It's so profound balance. So I say that the cause of cancer is a desire for good health and a fear of cancer. So what does God do? God balances that with that fear and the and makes cancer a very real thing. And we power that cause and effect continually with our thoughts. We, I'll explain simply a little bit out how we get our energy. We breathe in photons of light and compress them centripetally and they become volts of electricity. Those volts of electricity are masculine in gender and alkaline in content. And as we express those uh, as electrons, feminine in gender, acidic in content, and they power our fear-based beliefs. And they are the most, it's God's power, it's God's energy we're expressing. So we are the enormous, powerful creator, not knowing that we're creating our own death, our own demise, by powering something that does not exist. And this is what we're coming to realize. I got rid of all my ailments by giving no thought. I wrote about it in the book. I, four years ago, I couldn't see a thing without glasses. And I, I'd go to read. I'd say, hang on a bit, I'll put my glasses on. These are bloody good glasses. I can't see without them, you know. So, and I decided to shut up. And I'd put them on and say nothing, give it no thought at all. And I don't know when I stopped putting them on, but I found I could see clearly without glasses. And today, at the age of nearly 84, I can thread a needle in cotton with ease. I did it with all the other ailments in the body, just by not giving it any attention. It is amazing stuff. It, it, it excites me. I, I, I got rid of all my aches and pains using this philosophy, Walter Russell's philosophy, or the Sermon on the Mount philosophy, if you like, and it works, it works. And uh, I feel at my age, my life is just beginning. I'm on the threshold of something. I feel greater than myself. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so anyway, there is no such thing as sickness. Once we get understand what we're seeing in another person. Now, let me put this another way. We create issues in our life to wake up to who we are, who I am. 
And quite often, we don't realise it, we try and not have those issues with ourselves, not knowing we get somebody else to play out our fears. Because all of you are a clear expression of my own ego self. When we start to deal with those issues out there and realise they're our own stuff and deal with them in here, doors open that never opened before. I created a son, I, he lived to the age of 34 and died of leukaemia. I had a fear of leukaemia, cancer and death. So I created a son to live out those fears and die of that to wake me up and that is what woke me up. In actual fact, my son was never born, never lived. There is no, let me put this out, put this. Russell says, there are no two things in the universe. Nothing is ever created. Everything appears real, but it is only an expression of, it has no reality. So knowing that, uh, open doors a lot too. Oh, I might be losing you a bit there. There are no two things in the universe, yeah. That didn't, but to know that it's impossible for man to do anything in life, it is impossible. Uh, it, God does it all. And we just got to move, move back out of that space and let him have a go. Would anybody like to question what I'm saying? I, I'm wide open. When you understand cause, you can actually answer virtually any question. It, it's amazing, yeah. Has anybody oh, I've got on another bit of a topic I'll talk about that is very dear to me? But just at this point, does anybody have a question? <laughs> okay then. Okay. Do you think that we're No, there's nothing there. Nothing was ever created. As we open up to this and realize that we are God in expression, we have no, the body and the, all what we think is real has no, the body is completely inanimate. Our organs, I feel, that we think are in the body are in consciousness. And we're dealing, when we start dealing with just pure consciousness, we're dealing with God. And the imagination is the only real part of creation. And uh, so we're opening up to that very rapidly now. Yeah. The other subject, and it's pushing my buttons, Walter Russell discovered the source of free energy available to the world. And it never got out there. We have an unlimited supply of free energy that we're using now and don't know what it is. We're actually swimming in a sea of energy. It's like we're like the fish in the sea, swimming in the water who says, where's the water? And we're the same. We're swimming in a sea of energy. And that energy is God in expression, which is electricity, which is not energy. Energy is at the center of and at right angles to all motion. Wherever you've got motion, God will be there to balance that motion. At the dead center of your car, where there's no motion, the crankshaft, that is where God is. At the middle of a cyclone, or you call it a hurricane, right at the center of that hurricane, there is no motion. That is where God is. So to know where God is at all times and know how he balances his expressions, which are forever in balance, is an enormous step in understanding cause. So what I don't understand is that Russell discovered this energy, which is God. It, it's, it's stationary and can never be, uh, uh, never be created. It can only be expressed. And God expresses that motion in everything we say and do. If you take the wing of an aeroplane, the air that flows over the wing flows further than underneath and flows faster, therefore it's of a lower pressure. And the powers that be said that the plane is sucked up. But understanding God's principle, God is in that wing balancing that motion. 
and it's his force that there's 500 ton of aeroplane in the air. It's God's force, energy. Man doesn't seem to know that. The same as with a jet engine. It's not the jet engine passed in the plane forward. It's God between the incoming air and the outgoing air at right angles that drags the plane forward. Same as a sailing boat, the same as a ship, uh, all the same principles. And we have this energy we're using now and don't know it. And it's a, it's a, it, I can't find out why. I don't know why, but it's a, we, might, we might not be ready for it, so who knows? Uh, yeah. I, I just about covered all I want to talk about. As Walter Russell says, we need to move from an outer sensing body and let all judgment go and move to an inner knowing mind where there are no differences. And when we see no differences, he says we then, then act cosmically and globally and be as one with God. It's seeing the differences. One of the issues as I study his philosophy, it keeps unfolding and fine tuning and fine tuning and fine tuning. In the last book I wrote of Know Who I Am, in the last chapter, I quote Russell when he says, we must take all the attributes of this life, the love, the joy, the sex, the electricity, the, the wonder of all we, we experience, we must take all those attributes and completely and utterly disregard them. They have no reality whatsoever. They are only mind in motion. We must come home to God. And I resonate with it, but I, I don't know whether I can fully grasp it, but it's, it's, a, it's an enormous shift that's taking place in consciousness, and each will do it his own way. And when we come to understand the problems in the world, this is what I forgot to write down, the problems out there in the world are not out there. The universe is within man himself. There is no universe out there. So if we see an issue out there like, say, let's say corruption, if you want to overcome corruption in the world, deal with it within yourself. Basically give it no attention. If you have a problem with anything going on in the universe, heal it from within oneself. I live in a motor home on the highway, a coaster bus, and I've been living there for four years, and I choose not to judge another driver. And in the process, in four years, I've never seen an irate driver. Every driver performed is a better driver by not having somebody judge him. We are of the one mind, and every action and every thought is experienced by every person in the universe. There is no separation. So in the healing and the problems in the world, deal with it within oneself. I tell the story of Joel Goldsmith. Had a woman come, in, come to him, she said, she got married at a young age and they, husband and her both worked. And um, he ended up becoming an alcoholic. And she went to Joel Goldsmith with the problem. She said, he's just there at the door waiting for me to come home with the money each week to buy the whiskey, she said. And he's destroying himself, she said, what can I do? And he questioned her and said, you don't like whiskey and alcohol, do you? No, she said, it's killing my husband, it's killing him. And he pondered for a while, he said, look, he said, I don't think your husband's got a problem. Oh, no, she said, he's, he's an alcoholic. No, he said, I think you might be the alcoholic. Oh, she said, don't tell me that, I don't drink. He said, let's try an experiment. He said, well, right, she said, I'll try anything. He said, well, when they come home with the pay next time, pick his whiskey up and just give it to him. And do that each week and see what happens. Come back and let me know if anything happens. She come back three weeks later and she said, you won't believe this, she said. I brought his whiskey back this week. And he said to me, look, love, don't buy any more of that post-war whiskey. It's got no kick in it. He said, as a matter of fact, I'm not going to drink anymore. You know, and that is very profound. And we'll find that when we start to 
deal with issues, particularly family and sicknesses and problems, and know that the, the sickness is not in the child, it's in our own consciousness. If you've got a, uh, like your son had uh, can, uh, leukemia, he never had it, I had it, I, I had him to play it out, but the bottom line, it's within our own consciousness, and we can heal it at that level by giving, I use the word, give it no thought. So it's just so interesting when you start applying these principles to your life. I, when I was 58, I was smoking 50 cigarettes a day and heaving my belly up in the morning with phlegm and I tried every trick in the book. The men I worked with paid five dollars a day to keep me away from work. I was too cranky to live with. And I had a shift in consciousness and I decided to stop telling myself I felt like a smoke. And I smoke regardless. And I just give it no attention whatsoever. And within 10 days, I couldn't smoke. And I knew I would never smoke again. And I started to apply those principles to my everyday living. And it would profound effect. And let go and let God. I was constipated all my life. And about 10 years ago, I got fed up. And I said, bugger it. Let God have a go at this. And I just give it no more thought and everything changed dramatically and <laughs> it's annoyingly persistent. <laughs> but it, it works, it actually works. And I, as I applied it to my life with wonderful success. And I'm just right on the threshold, I think, uh, to opening up to something far greater than ourselves. We're all are, We're, I, I, I see it here and it's very, very obvious. There's a divineness that's coming through that's got no ego to it. We're getting away from that ego concept and where we see no differences in one another. And it's, it's, a, it's exciting stuff. Thank you, thank you.